Star Fox 64 was and still is an absolute banger. When it arrived on the Nintendo 64 in the summer of 1997, it blew gamers of the day away with its tight control, immersive presentation, and comical anthropomorphic animals. It is one of the greatest games in the N64 library, and I believe it is still the best game in the Star Fox franchise. Especially considering the weird direction the franchise took with Command, ah, you better stop, stop. Adventures, and Assault following the Star Fox 64 success. Man, when I tell you that this game was just amazing and the game that I truly cherish from the N64 days, I really do mean it. I think the beauty in Star Fox 64 was found in its easy to learn controls, freedom to choose one's path to progress, and the fun shoot 'em up arcade high score style. It had everything for those players in the 1990s with a fresh new 3D perspective. I remember my first time playing in elementary school, I thought the game was something of the future. Outside Ocarina of Time, I never felt as immersed as I did playing Star Fox 64, even if it was something as simple as flying through rings to rack up my score. Star Fox, unfortunately, has never been much on creating a unique and sprawled out campaign, but that never bothered me when it came to the hours of fun one can have just playing multiplayer and shooting down your friend's R wings. I think the best part of Star Fox has always been its multiplayer. I have the most special memories blasting my friends using a Landmaster, R wing, or just straight up pistol in Star Fox Assault and screaming get absolutely wrecked as loud as possible. I think this game's multiplayer was responsible for my high school love of shooters like Call of Duty to be quite honest. So provided all this, in the E3 2014 when Nintendo announced it was working on a reimagining of Star Fox 64 for the Wii U known as Star Fox Zero, I got really excited. Considering my love for Star Fox 64's innovative style and Assault's addicting multiplayer, I really thought Star Fox would capture it all. I knew due to the fact they're focusing heavily on the playstyle of Star Fox 64 that Star Fox Zero wouldn't have the same approach to multiplayer as Star Fox Assault, leaving me with the hope that the game would nail 64 on the head of a modern take. Unfortunately, that modern take was utilizing gyro motion controls via the gamepad. And not even that, no local competitive multiplayer. Star Fox Zero has to be the biggest disappointment in Nintendo's library of flagship franchises. Let's start by discussing the cancer that is gyro motion controls via a game pad. I will never, for the life of me, understand Nintendo's obsession with forcing players to use one control scheme methodology. Skyward Sword forced players to use the Motion Plus for all of Link's attacks. There was never an option to use manual sticks like a GameCube controller via the Wii ports. I personally did not mind the Motion Control, and I thought it was pretty well done in Skyward Sword. However, I know many people that could not finish or play Skyward Sword because of this Motion Control issue. In retrospect, this was a terrible idea to force players to go through, which made Skyward Sword disliked by many fans. Now pan over to Star Fox Zero, and the situation gets so much worse. The game forces players to utilize the gamepad with gyro motion controls and encourages a player to utilize two viewpoints, the Wii U gamepad cockpit and the TV third person view that was traditionally used in games like Star Fox 64. This forced method of gameplay makes flying, driving, and everything in between nauseating and just not fun at all to pick up. Star Fox 64 makes so much sense from its first mission. You immediately pick up your control, you get to figure out how to view in your 3D perspective, how to aim your reticle, shoot, do barrels, all of that. Instead, in Zero, I find myself panning screen to screen and lining up shot after shot with failure because I can't get the damn gyro motion controls calibrated right. And why on earth is it a good idea to change your view constantly from gamepad to TV? Do you know how hard that is to keep up with while not getting damaged with the fast pace that is Star Fox Zero? Think of it like this. Imagine when you're driving, you have to constantly switch views from your windshield to your steering wheel. Yes, you become a lot more focused, but man, do you grow to hate driving. Going from two separate views like that is the worst idea ever. Gyro motion controls get even so much worse when you have to use the gyro wing and deploy the direct eye at pace killing missions. The gyro wing, I understand why they thought they needed to add a new vehicle to expand 
the lore i'd say or maybe even to expand the methodology of play in Star Fox. But the gyro wing is not it. It ruins so many missions. I'm looking at you, Zorus. The gyro wing moves so slow compared to the pace of every other vehicle operated in Star Fox. At times, it requires such painful precision to drop the robot and just painfully slow pace that I felt like I was being forced to do a task completely unrelated to Star Fox. This should have never been a vehicle to operate and let alone should not have been operated by gyro motion controls like every other vehicle. Granted, I found it easier to pick up the long I kept playing, but it never truly felt fun for me because I had to constantly move my hands around like an idiot and constantly switch between two screens. Gyro motion controls are fun and all that if the player decides to use them. Look at Breath of the Wild. It had an option to use gyro and not. If you use gyro, by all means, go for it. If you're like me and prefer to use sticks, then by all means, give me the option to use sticks. Star Fox 64 was so great at its time, and Star Fox Zero really follows a lot of the same playstyle that Star Fox 64 was relying on. So why not just let people play Star Fox Zero with sticks? It would be so much better of an experience. I dread to ever go back to Zero because I know I have to pick up that giant gamepad and move around like an idiot. It doesn't make me feel like Fox, it doesn't make me feel like a pilot, it makes me feel like somebody who's being forced to play a game in a way that is not efficient at all. And I get that the gamepad had to be used because the Wii U's whole gimmick was the gamepad, but at the same time, maybe you could have used the gamepad differently, like a map or something that I occasionally look. Not a cockpit view that I have to constantly look at if I want to aim my reticle really precisely. On a system like the 3DS, this probably would have worked a lot better. You look at top screen and bottom screen simultaneously because they're so close to each other and it makes them a lot more sense. But on the Wii U? Dude, come on. God, the Wii U just sucked so much! Miyamoto, why did you rely on the Wii U's gamepad? You were so close on this one. Uh -huh. I guess if I have to be fair, the best way that this control scheme does work is in co-op, but unfortunately co-op is the only form of multiplayer in Star Fox Zero. But let's just dig into co-op real quick. Co-op kind of works because with a pro controller, someone can just pilot the R-Wing. Meanwhile, the person with the gamepad can use their cockpit to actually shoot at people. So it does work a lot more efficiently and doesn't require one person switching between screens. However, co-op still kind of sucks because the communication between pilot and gunner is kind of hard to really get down. I don't care how close of a friend you think you might have, it's really tough to line up your shot while some person's avoiding just getting crashes in general while piloting the R-Wing. Not to mention, this means the co-op requires a gamepad, and that's just kind of annoying that you have to use it no matter what. It'd be cool if, you know, you had your friends over and you can plug in a Genki controller or pro controllers or, I don't know, just Wii Remote nunchucks even just to play the game. But someone has to use a gamepad, and that's just terrible that you're forcing someone to have to go through that whole cockpit experience. Now, if you thought that my biggest gripe was gyro motion, it's not. My biggest gripe is that co-op is the only form of multiplayer. There's no competitive multiplayer like Star Fox Assault or even an online multiplayer. How hard is it to do that? You know how fun it would be if people could just use their R wings via pilot wings and shoot each other down? I know it's really hard to aim at enemies in the game using gyro motion, but if everyone used just the pro controller and multiplayer to shoot other people down, I promise you this game would have done a lot better. You know how many awesome moments people would have just shooting each other down just with our wings in the simple map you don't have to even go crazy with it just give people an hd version of a competitive multiplayer and i promise you people would lose their mind but no they didn't do that also the last thing i want to mention about using gyro in co-op in campaign in whatever this game came out towards the end of we use life cycle the switch is already coming up pretty soon why rely on gyro motion controls when you know that very soon you're abandoning the entirety of gyro motion for this new innovative version of the Nintendo Switch. 
Gyro was not a demand people wanted, and Gyro was not something that people really look forward to in the next console. It probably was one of the most frustrating aspects of the Wii U. So why make one of the exit games of the Wii U's era based on gyro controllers? Just... <sighs> gyro controls don't make sense for this game! The only time I ever had fun using this terrible control scheme was probably when the R-Wing was on rails. But as soon as the R-Wing, the Landmaster, the Gyrocopter, Wing, whatever, as soon as any of these vehicles had a free point of perspective where you aimed anywhere, everything just became so annoying to find enemies and shoot them from miles away using gyroscope motion controls. I'm sorry guys, I'm repeating myself, but I really, really hate this control scheme with every inch of my being. In terms of visualization, this game is pretty mediocre. It looks terrible. The water physics looks something out of Sonic 06, and all the landscapes just look barely rendered. Like, it just looks awful. Like, it looks like a game from the Wii. I don't even think it has any sense of HD behind it. The game just looks frustratingly behind for the time it came out. This is a 2014 title. How is it that it looks so trashy? Even stuff like explosions and stuff that's supposed to be the highlight of the battle between vehicles like airships and tanks looks terrible. The explosions look so minor and Everything around you just looks like someone's first 3D project in Unity for the GameCube. I don't know why they didn't think to put too much more effort into the visualization of this game. Just like the first level alone, you're coming into a giant sea of water. How nice would it look if, you know, the shadowing of it looked a lot better, the glistening sun over the water looked a lot cooler, the buildings actually seemed like they had life behind them. I, I, I don't know, like, it just feels so static and void of just any energy. I, I can't stand how this game looks. Also, the voice acting is pretty cool that we have that, like, the original game. Uh, fortunately, I don't know why they thought that the voice acting should come out of the gamepad. That's just... I... Why? <laughs> why? I get maybe it's because you want to feel like a pilot actually listening to the inside of your cockpit, but the gamepad speakers... For, for voice? For voices. For the voice acting that you paid and really wrote a script for, you're gonna put behind the muffled McDonald's drive through speakers of your gamepad. <sighs> Why? Honestly, I'm trying really hard to think of a positive in this game. <sighs> and I guess the only positive I can think of is that the boss battles were kind of fun. Like, it felt like the old days of playing you know, boss battles in 64. It really felt like giant, you know, epic battles and really felt like the skills you learn up to that point really do come into play. There's some, you know, minute details like using the walker in certain segments of boss battles that are kind of annoying to me, but overall the boss battles are definitely the biggest highlight of the game, but man, everything else about this game just sucks. It's not that crazy of a story and definitely isn't gameplay that makes me want to continue and, you know, come back and find out new routes of where I was before. I know that's a big highlight in Star Fox games that they want players to really look for different routes. Truly, once I finished the mission, I did not feel like ever going back to one and finding out what I missed. This game sucks, man. This game really, really sucks. I'm, I'm just so disappointed in it. I, I don't even think I have an outro for this video. I just, Star Fox Zero, really huge disappointment. You look at Star Fox, 64, and even Assault, it, it, they had their moments. Avengers even, I think is a very controversial game to support, but I support it and think it was a great take on Star Fox. But this, Star Fox Zero, I think this is the final nail in the coffin for Star Fox. This is the first game that came out after a decade of nothing in terms of main entry games. Honestly, Smash the only thing that's really holding on to Fox, Falco, Wolf, and just the Star Fox lore. Without Smash, this franchise really just falls apart. It's sad to think, but I don't see a future after Star Fox Zero. They tried to innovate it, they tried to change it, and it just didn't work out. I give Star Fox Zero a 4 out of 10. But what do you guys think? Do you think I'm being too harsh on Star Fox Zero? Do you think Star Fox Zero actually was a slept on classic that really touched on the genius 
of gyroscope motion controls. By all means, comment below if you guys think that I'm wrong. I want to see your opinion on the matter and what you think the future of Star Fox looks like. I think it looks pretty grave, but who knows, I might be wrong. Miyamoto has proven time again that he's able to change up the formula and save some games. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your attention. Please subscribe if you like this content. Like it, comment, let us know how we're doing. And until next time, this has been Simon from the Panic Brothers, and I'll see you guys later.